All right, guys, welcome to the Noda Winter Tournament. This is Fire Breathing Duckies Dark versus Team Zap. Snackers. Uh, as always, this is your caster, Moxie. I'm joined today with Koryamon. Hello. And yeah. uh, looks like we're getting right into the draft here. A very quick ban on the OD. That makes me happy. Ten seconds remaining. A uh, quick ban on the Enchantress, too. Uh, good call, I feel. Enchantress is very, very strong this patch, especially with that Dragonlance buff. A little surprising in this sort of patch. Uh, I'm sorry, in this sort of tournament, though. Enchantress isn't something that uh, quote-unquote noobs really want to play. And in the noobs of the ancient tournament, uh, you might not see so many Enchantresses. You'd be surprised. There's actually quite a few people in this tournament that really enjoy playing her. That's good to hear, because it is it is the go-to hero. Well, she's such a strong offlaner, especially when you consider the fact that, you know, the right-click and the uh, the fast six on her can be really just a pain in the butt for any sort of hard carry going up against her early. We're going to see that the Death Prophet is banned out here, too, as well as the Ember Spirit. Lots of mids getting banned out here right off the bat. Uh, I know that Die High does play the Death Prophet and has been fairly successful with her in the past, so that's a good call. I also like that they picked up the Vengeful Spirit and the Lich over on Snackers. Vengeful Spirit, I'm pretty sure that'll be uh, Di Diaspora, is that correct? I can always pronounce that wrong. Diaspora, there you go. Diaspora, there you go. Or, I'm thinking about it too much now. Um, but that'll be Diaspora, who's going to be playing the Vengeful Spirit. You can see the line and the Gyrocopter pick up here over on Duckies. I'm guessing that uh, Chocolat will be playing our farming Gyrocopter. Do you expect a carry Vengeful Spirit? Mm, I don't think so, no. I don't believe they'll run that. I don't think Snackers has run that either. Interesting pickup on the Lone Druid here over on Fire Breathing Duckies. I do like the fact that I'm seeing the ban on the Spectre and on the Void. I've been seeing a lot of games where teams will pick both of those heroes up, and the Void just creates so much space so that the Spectre can and come the Spectre and get what she needs. So we see a lot of burst damage in the mid game over on the Dire side. Uh, we got the Finger, we got the Call Down. We got Rocket Barrage, Spike. All these uh, spells are very, very good when you have a tanky core like Lone Druid, or like the bear of Lone Druid, to soak up the enemy first. You don't need a ton of control if you can keep running at them. Speaking of running at I them, know, right? Abaddon. I know, right? I Abaddon pickup. So like this is going to be either a core Abaddon or a... Uh, Eventual spirit. No, I don't or think so. No. Lich. I guess you could offlane so. Lich. No, I think that's going to be an offlane of Abaddon, and then we're going to see eventual spirit as a support, run as a tri lane with Lich. But, but at the very least, Lich. at the very least, this Abaddon is going to have to farm a little bit, is what I mean to say. Yeah, he'll be set as a core. Um, probably stack auras. And AA against that, but. Then. That's a good pick up there. I like it also with the gyrocopter ulti on top of that. And the lone druid bear radiance, if he decides to go radiance. Yeah, it's the, there's a lot of nice synergies there. They're lacking a little control, but again, if you can keep running at them, and this lineup doesn't have a lot of damage right now. Vengeful Spirit, Lich, Abaddon, they don't really deal the most damage. You have Chain Frost. You have a uh, magic missile. They're gonna need some cores to uh, to put on the hurt. There's Queen of Pain. Yep, there's the yep. damage. That's gonna be Die High's Queen of Pain. And they're gonna have usually uh, Die High's very very good with her, and they're gonna find that they're gonna have trouble. I have a good feeling dealing with his Queen of Pain. Surprised it actually got through the uh, the the ban phases. Usually they ban that out. Or at least other teams have. But maybe they're not really afraid of it. I don't know. Five well, we're seeing the popular heroes from the Shanghai Major being banned out by the Dire. You have the Spectre, the Ursa, the Enchantress, the Death Prophet. All heroes that are very, very powerful when uh, used correctly. Same thing going on here on Snackers. We're seeing that the uh, Invoker and the OD are getting banned right off. And again, we've seen a lot of Faceless Void this tournament getting used as an offlane. And just creating a lot of space. 
So they need a farming carry now for Vanadium here. Over on Team Snackers. Oh, Morphling is a great band. That was the hero that I was thinking of. If you got an Ethereal Blade, you could blow up the line, you could blow up the AA. And those two heroes are integral for the Fire Breathing Duckies team fight. Especially this line. This line, I'm hoping, is going to pick up a quick blink. Because he's their control right now. You might need a controlling mid, like Puck. Puck would be a good pick for the Dire. Very good against Queen of Pain in lane. Or at least they match up evenly. It looks like Snackers isn't sure what the Fire Breathing Duckies are going to grab next, so uh, taking a little bit of time here to just really think about their bands. So we're going to need an Ultra Carry for the Radiant. Maybe a PL? Oh, I'm not sure I like that. I'm not sure I like the PL over for Snackers. They just need something that can contest these heroes if it goes late. And I think it will go late. They got decent counter push with the Lone Druid, AA, Gyrocopter. How are you going to push into this? You know, normally I would say that uh, something like a Sven would be pretty good here. It's been seeing a lot of play with that too. Uh, but the Gyrocopter is just going to be able to kite. And there's a Tide Hunter pickup here. That's going to be one heck of a team fight. I think Sven would be an excellent pick. You still think Sven would be good even though they can kite him a bit? Well, they can kite him. They have the Rocket Barrage, they have the Flat Cannon as well. Um, but Sven's a hero that you can contest the enemy in the mid game right now. Tidehunter, of course, Ravage, but if you get a BKB, BKB this game is good against all their heroes, excepting Lone Druid. Gyrocopter, most of his damage is magical until, uh, until Flat Cannon starts to be his main source of damage. So if he doesn't get those items up, Sven's a good pick. Plus you have Warcry and Ice Armor. It's gonna be a Slark pick up here. Oh, interesting. It looks like they got the Reed Goose. You can fight again and again and again. A Radiant team got a good, good lineup. I like it. Not at all what I was thinking there either. Well, those supports are going to have to watch out. They are easily food for either the uh, Slark or the Queen of Pain. Alright guys, so for those of you who are just joining us, this is Noto Winter Tournament. This is Fire Breathing Duckies versus Team Snackers. It's a best of three series. We are into the main stage. I'm here, your caster Moxie, here with my co-caster Karayamon. And uh, why don't we get to introducing the teams? I will introduce the Dire. Over here we have Friarfly, who will be playing our Lion. Tip Tip the Door will be playing Loom Druid. Usain Catbolt will be playing our Ancient Apparition. Trump has the Asian votes, which uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on with that name. It's going to be playing the Tide Hunter, and Chocolat will be playing our Farming Gyrocopter over on Team Fire Breathing Duckies. And on the Radiant, we have Press the Pig playing that Lich. We got Vanadium Silver, Iodine, Sodium on the Slark. We got DS Penguin Man on the Abaddon. We have Diaspora on Ventral Spirit and Die High on Quap. So what do you think? When we're looking at these drafts just right off the bat, who do you think has the better draft? I think that the Dire side has a, a lineup that's a lot easier to execute. Uh, but that being said, if executed right, Snackers, they have a team that can fight again and again and again, and they can jump out and jump back in. Abaddon with that sustain, Slark with his sustain, Quap with the blink, Ventral Spirit with swap. They have a lot of range to their abilities. So basically they, they can pick apart the Dire side in fights if they play correctly. But that also requires the Dire to play incorrectly. So it's going to be harder for the Radiant to do this than the Dire. So do you think that you're going to put your money on the, the Dire winning this then? If I had to put money, I mean, I'm a bad better. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think I like Dire's team a little bit more in this context, at okay. least. If this was a pub, Radiant for sure. 
Now they do have some good lanes to fight the Dire, so they can win these lanes and potentially snowball off of that as well. And it looks like the top rune is easily going to be going over to the Dire, whereas bottom rune will be secured by the Radiant here. Something to mention, Lone Druid seems to be going mid. Mm, and he has a stout shield on his hero and not on his bear. Hope that switches over soon. And he also has a quelling blade that is sitting on in the inventory. <laughs> I mean, he bought it as soon as he got the bounty rune, so. Oh, okay. Level 7 bear. Pretty annoying. And where do you think you're going to see first blood? I think that... Maybe it'll be bottom with the Tidehunter? Tidehunter is cracking shell already, so it's gonna I mean, be hard to bring him down. I'd look at this top lane with the tri lane. Mm -hmm. Gyrocopter with Rocket Barrage does so much damage, and then you have... Oh, he skilled, he skilled Ice Vortex first, he didn't get Chilling Touch. Chilling Touch is so much better in the early game, I, uh, I'm questioning that decision. It looks like Press the Pig expects a lot of uh, harass coming out here. He does have six tangos on him. So let's talk a little bit about this mid matchup. We have Quap versus Lone Druid. You can't really zone the Lone Druid bear, but you can zone, <laughs> you zone can the, lone. the Lone Druid. So. <laughs> Pop's throwing out some nice harass onto the actual Lone Druid. Is actually doing better in terms of last sitting uh, in lane as well, sitting at 7 and 2. Actually at the top of the CS currently. Going a little early for the top room. And Tidehunter levels up his shell over his Anchor Smash. I, I believe that's because he, he thinks he's going to be zoned out a bit more by the Vengeful Spirit. Well, the Venge has been throwing Venge out a lot of right hits onto him, so... Also, keep and now that Slark is 3, they could probably go on him. They Ooh, have Firefly's a little bit of trouble here. Lich is also in trouble here, comes to press the Pegasus in a lot of... taking a lot of damage off the Gyrocopter. Oh yeah, that's going to be first blood. Uh, going to chop Cold Heat Proc. And DX Penguin Man needs to get out of there. In some trouble, there's the. Look at all that damage coming out. There's That's a rocket barrage and he's dead! <laughs> Nicely played by Chuck Law. Bottom lane, Tiger is almost so dead. He is trying to juke around in the trees here. Ventral Spirit does not have enough for his He's trying shit. to TP away. Oh, oh and there's TP. Oh, he's and he's gone! Good play from the Tide Hunter. Juking in the trees. So that's what I was saying. Slark, once he hits three, if you hit with a couple essence shifts, you can kill that tiny, or er, tiny, this tide hunter, even if the want? shell is proccing. Ooh, uh oh, Tip Tip Fedora is gonna fall here! He's gonna solve up and he's actually gonna make it out with, like, he no can hit deny points. himself. Like no, he's gonna make it. He's gonna have to deny himself. He's dead. Oh my he's gosh. dead. Deny yourself. Oh, one more tick. Oh. <laughs> that would have been some next level play. Recalling the bear and hitting yourself. <laughs> Maybe he didn't know that he could do that? Well, when he watches the uh, replay later, he'll know for sure. So that has been oh, sitting there at level 5, along with Lone Druid though. Did secure a death though. It's always interesting to see where Slark puts his uh, fourth point. He's going to put it into the Dark Pact this game. That helps him farm a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. uh, the oldest build that I remember was maxing Pounce. And the reason why you do that is because you want to fight over and over and over again. As soon as you hit 7, you're just going to be fighting. Um, and lowering the cooldown to pounds is what makes you able to fight. Uh, but if you max Dark Pack, it's more of a farming build. I like it a little bit better this game because your offlane is not doing the greatest right now, so you don't necessarily want to fight immediately.
And Lone Druid is in uh is in Quap's first range right now. Bottling up to get full. Interesting that he sent the bare bottom. I don't know why he sent it at like five minutes. And Quap is currently uh Slark actually leaving CS with twenty-eight and four. Quap following up very close to Oh and Tide? And that's a dead tide hunter. <laughs> Magic missile and then the chase. That's a scary la like any lane where you have a uh, a stun along with Slark usually results in quite a few kills. So I'm surprised that he was being so ballsy. I mean, I know Tidehunter is a uh, tanky hero, but especially if he's been getting chipped down with a bunch of right clicks, which it looks like Ventral Spirit was being really good about doing. One thing Bob, to Bob is gonna clean up mid. Take out oh, the nice. Man. And that's that's what Quap has to do in this matchup because the Lone Druid should be able to contest farm. Ooh, but... Firefly and uh, hey, I need to be careful here. Oh, Quap has used her Sonic Wave though. It's just gonna go run back. Regenerate available bomb. Tidehunter has seen that they've got a pull going on over here. Gonna try to get some experience. He's being heavily zoned out. Now that he's trying to play a little bit more cautiously after dying. Uh, Coming near to death last time as well. Now, what do you think about the dual lane top here with the DX Penguin and Press the Pig? I think that it could have gone a lot worse, and I think it also could have gone a lot better. If the AA had Chilling Touch, I think that they could just get zoned completely. Um, But they're denying farm from the gyrocopter, and that's the important part. They should not go on this gyrocopter. That's gonna be a full team. That's gonna be that Abaddon. Rocket Barrage is such a good ability. <laughs> <laughs> and then the the cold feed immediately as soon as. Ooh, that guy coming uh, in, going in onto Chocolat. It's Spike. He's got the Shadow Strike onto him. He's searching for him here. He's gonna try to TP Oh, he's out. out. He's out. Oh, no. he's he's oh he gets off. him. Nicely done. And that's the third kill for Die High here. Meanwhile, in mid, we're seeing the uh, Lone Druid taking advantage of the space now that Quap is out of his lane and he doesn't have to worry about dying quite as much. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. And we are seeing that Slark is going to be going for a Shadow Blade here. Hasted Lich running through. Looks like Lich will be going for a Glimmer Cape for his first item here. He does have that cloak. I think Pipe is an item that he's not going to get quickly, but it's an item that you'd want him to have this game. So you don't, um, so you don't Glimmer? Well, I think that it's probably going to be a Glimmer, but I'd like to see a Pipe. <laughs> Pipe is so good against AA, it's so good against the uh, Gyrocopter, and it's decent versus Tide as well. And it looks like Daihai is going to be going straight up Ags this game, right after his boots. It does have a smoke on him as well, so probably planning on doing a few ganks. And Tidehunter is just hanging out over here by the Ancients, looking to stack them. Trying to make up for uh, the CS that he's not getting in lane. I think Ags is definitely the right choice. I was saying it before, they, they have a lineup that can just keep on fighting mm. over and over again. Uh, Ags <laughs> continues that theme. Of course, the 30 second cooldown on Sonic Wave is amazing. Well, again, like you said, you just they got this team that just can keep coming in. And, uh, oh, and again, there's a and, smoke uh, on the lion. Ventral's gonna point out the fact that uh, 
There does appear to be some stacking going on over for the Tide Hunter. Okay, we've got Diehai coming in here. And he's gonna find the line. Oh, oh that's he, not gonna he connect missed, though! Missed and he's just gonna try oh, to he, get out. So they don't, oh, oh, they are able to clean up. With oh, the but they can burst him down. Now that is a sonic wave. That is uh, a minute or two minutes on the cooldown. But I mean, it kills a kill. But that's, that's a so dead, <laughs> dead that's, line. That's gonna help. He's Pop. still so four. He's gonna keep just snowballing here with all these kills. That's four kills now over onto the Quap. And that's also less space for the gyrocopter now that uh, line has been taken out. They can be a little bit more bullyish here down in the, uh, the bot lane. Especially as Abaddon does have a 6, so he can be a little bit more daring here. And we're seeing that Slark has completed the Shadow Blade. He's looking for a pick here. And I don't think, because Tide has been busy just not being in lane at this point, he's been trying to go stack and uh, take those Ancients. I don't think they know that there's a Shadow Blade on the Slark yet. On the Slark yet. I so mean, if be... they are aware, they can see. They can see the Slark. Shadow Dance isn't procking right now. And I don't think that the Slark was noticing that because he's still here. Coming oh, in from behind. Going oh, on the Lion. The cooldown's going to come out. The first oh, damage is coming out. The Slark starts going to Shadow it's Dance everyone. down to Abaddon. Getting healed up. Lich is going to fall, but that's two kills onto the Slark. Oh, that's Lich. Oh, that's Lich. Lich is going to fall, but that's two kills onto the Slark. Oh, he fell to the tower. He could have oh. moved back. Toggled aggro. Still. That's a... That's... Great two kills right there. And that's kill actually did not go to the Slark. It actually ended up going as an assist. So I tried to go into Tifidor again. The lion's gonna TP in here. I like that this is a very active Slark. I like that he's uh not just sitting in lane farming. Flip side, the tide hit six, but they haven't been pushing with him. They haven't been moving around with him. Tide Hunter 6, you can go around and do stuff. You got Ravage. Mm -hmm. Oh, and now we see something happening. Oh, Smoke yeah. on okay. the dire, going towards bottom, but there's four people here. They do have Ravage available, so... Being very patient over here on the side of the dire. We are going to see that Diehai is going to be Oh, the Slark. There's the wave of terror the coming out onto the Oh no, press the pig, press the pig, it's gotten caught out here, he is going to fall. That is is going to be able to get out. Slark pinging out that there is definitely a ward over in that area. And he's making his way down here. They still have the Ravage available. There's a lot of heroes. Tyro is so under farmed right now. He's got phase boots, morbid masks. Venadium's coming forward and gonna go onto the Tidehunter. Tidehunter's gonna and take no it out. And they're gonna chase after the same bolt here. Gonna be able to take down the AA. The Ace Penguin Man. The swap's coming out onto Firefly. They don't have enough of the stun. Here comes the call down. The Ace okay, Penguin Man is gonna down. be able to proc his ultimate here. And they're all gonna run away though. That call down saved them. Oh, do they go back in? Do they re-engage here? They don't have enough for a mess. Oh, I here. hope not. Slark is still here. As well. There is a Midas up on uh, Tip Tip Fedora. So they have some uh, comeback mechanism right now. And five heroes in the bot lane again. This is pretty scary that we've got a 3 and 0 Slark here. And uh, we have a 5 and 0. Queen of Pain, who's almost completed her Ags. Like, that's gonna be, uh, like, a 15-minute Ags or so. Lich does have the uh, Chain Frost available as well now, too. He's level 6. Here's gonna be the Wave of Terror coming out here. And Slark looking to go. But they're grouping up pretty well here. They do have a Sentry on the side as well that probably spotted him out. I mean, if I'm the Radiant here, I don't do anything. They're not- they're not pushing their advantage. Like, the Ravage is an advantage right now. So they shouldn't just push the tower. But they're fearing something. They're fearing the TP. 
But Quap has no mana. Quap is gonna be able to take that mid tower. That is a full Agnum Scepter that'll be coming to her. And Slark will point out, yeah, they have vision over here. There's the sentry getting dropped. It's gonna spot out the uh, observer, not the other sentry though, not within range. And going top, we're seeing some movement here. They're gonna TP after this Abaddon. There's the A blast. A blast is gonna. Oh, but he just TPs but... away. Gonna make space, and Tidehunter is gonna TP out as well. So that was a lot of wasted time here, bottom. And some wasted time top. Gyro is farming up. He has his uh, Helm of the Dominator on the Courier. Where but if you look at the... Down? If you look at the Radiant side, there's almost a mech up on Abaddon. There's an Urn of Shadows. You have the Shadow Blade. Yeah, Tide is not moving in mid. I was noticing that earlier. And the Ags, right? Yes. And what items do the Dire have right now? There's a Midas, Helm of the Dominator. Not much, unfortunately, here. Arcane Boots up on the Tidehunter. There's, there's nothing. AA going He's through got treads, treads over. Got his... yeah, I don't know yeah, about treads. I don't know about the treads either. <laughs> I was wondering about that. I think you just sit really, really far back and use Ice Blast this game and never get in range for Slark to blow you up or Quap to blow you up. And instead, you work towards an Agnum Scepter or you work towards uh, a My Disc, which will later be an Agnum Scepter. Well, hopefully Tidehunter returns fairly soon. I'm not sure what happened if it was disconnected. It's not disconnection. I don't know what's going on. Maybe something's going on in his home. Oh, there he is. And there's the pause. Uh, they are not ready. They have to wait for the other guy. Oh, but Abaddon resumed. <laughs> So line is almost six. That is big. Uh, they have some squishy supports up on the radiant side. Lich, uh, Venge, and Quap even is pretty squishy. Even though she has the Agnum Scepter, mm -hmm. if they get a blast and uh, and a finger on her, that's a dead Quap. Pictures getting drawn on our uh, mini map here. I think that's a tree. I hope it's a tree. Oh, I think that's flowers. A, there's some flowers. Yep, yeah, there's a cloud. There's I think that's a cloud. cloud. And I think they're ready to go now after they've drawn their house. <laughs> what a pretty picture. Pops is going to do some scouting. There's the ice blast, but, but that's a tower. And the TPing top. And they already have Die High in position here. They have no idea that he's in behind them because of that in this room. Oh, the courier, the courier! And the taste. Oh, Tidehunter running in here. Do they turn? No. And this smoke is still sitting on the line. They've never found a chance to use it. Uh, the current net worth, too, is favoring all of the uh, cores over here on the Radiant. And the next closest is the Gyrocopter, but it's about uh, 2k behind. Does Gyro have a creep yet? I'd like to uh, see him stack Ancients. They have the Tide, they have Gyro. And what are they gonna farm it with on the Radiant, so... TPing in here. They're all gonna run away. They're all in the same lane, too. Why are they running? Well, they're missing uh, their AA, but they don't need AA to no, fight. Just oh, just send in a blast. And there but is they, a they're really fearing. The Showing a lot of respect to Spire side. But they're never gonna get a pickoff. 
Clark is pointing out that uh, there is some sort of vision over here. Being very good and being very aware. Looks like they're going to be trying to go to push for this, so either the Dyer needs to respond to this, or... I don't know. Looks the like they're just moving back. They're not even gonna, gonna respond. Ice Blast? But the tower's at 6 HP, it's not... It's a dead tower. It's a dead tower, and that Ice Blast isn't gonna do anything with any damage to back it up. And if they want to keep pushing, Ice Blast will be on cooldown 20 seconds. Meanwhile, Lone Druid trying to go after this tower. They have no towers over here. Uh, they haven't taken a single Oh, mid oh boy, Clark? there's a dust, uh, sorry, Clark. not a dust and smoke coming out. And Quap's gonna run face first into it, but it's not gonna pop yet. There's a Quap, oh man, fine. there's a counter. Oh, a counter smoke. smoke. Oh. oh. Oh man, that was he's able to throw really out the defrost, but it's not. Oh man, Chocolat, Chocolat's also gonna fall. Here comes the Ravage. That Ravage is too late here. He did come out much sooner than that. Die High's gonna run away, and the Abaddon turning around. They're gonna go on the side. I'm pretty sure this is a dead Tide Hunter. This yeah, is a dead that's tide. a dead one. And he's godlike. That call yep. down into the into the ice blast was great. It hit three, but it wasn't enough. They had the mech. They had the they had their innate tankiness. Well, I that told you there's a reason why I was really surprised that Die High's Quap was not banned out. He is an excellent Quap and really just a force to be reckoned with when he's playing that hero. That being said, if there was a Ravage on top of those two... Might have gone differently. Those heroes are dead. Well, that Ravage was really, really late. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen that a bit earlier. At the very least, though, he's working towards his Blink Dagger. He's about 900 gold off. Once he has that, there will be uh, more potential for this Tide Hunter. But right now, this Tide isn't, uh, isn't doing his job enough. Ooh, you Slark's can see gonna run face first into Firefly here. Tidehunter is nearby, but he's oh, not going to be able to dead come out fast enough. Yeah. And the Quap almost has a BKB completed as well. Just needs that recipe. Lone Druid looks like he's still trying to go Radiance for the bear. But uh, we're going to see the Vengeful Spirit go ahead and plant some deep wards in here, so they're going to keep tabs on him. And uh... Yeah, they're going to see that there are a couple movement going on in the jungle. Looks like uh, Slark and Daihai are out for blood here. That's... They're gonna go on this Lone Druid. Lone Druid's in trouble. Yep. Coming right out, gonna immediately oh, him down. The Fear Spell coming out! They're gonna try to burst him down! Oh, they're so close. They, they had to wait for They're gonna be able to get the bear. I think the bear is enough. You get a lot of uh, a long XP time and bear. gold from it, but... Oh, did he even summon? Oh, he, he has it. He has the bear. Oh, okay. He, he had the summon, but uh... Playing from behind versus a Slark is probably one of the worst feelings in Dota. Well, it's up there a... with playing behind... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, especially a Slark that's been snowballing as hard as he has been. I mean, this Slark is sitting here 4 0. The world is his playground right now. I was gonna say, it's up there with uh, playing against Tinker from behind, playing against uh, Nature's Prophet from behind, and Slark. Because Slark just puts so much pressure on the map. He knows where your vision is, and he avoids it like it's ridiculous. And 3.3k up on him now. I wonder what his next item is going to be. There's no ice blast. Here comes the call down. They're just all going to avoid it and leave past it. So that's call down. And with those two ults on cooldown, they can just push the tower. Yep. And they're going to just go right for it. No fear. The X tanks them then. But they're trying to deny the tower. The X tanks turn around in the tower! Oh, oh and they uh, get Bob's going to get the tower. Nice to go. And there's the blink. On side. Let's see if they can make something happen with it, though. I mean, Slark is such a scary hero, too, especially when you consider that they've got some squishy supports that you can just easily eat. 
And it's not even some of the squishy ones. He could go after, I think he's gone after, you know, the... The Lone Druid and the, uh, the Gyrocopter. He's got a lot of kill potential here, especially because they've been roaming at least in pairs. On top of that. Wait, you can't burn Nine and anymore. O, Plop. There's gonna be a smoke. Looks like they're gonna be moving towards Oshan. They're gonna run into uh, the Vengeful Spirit here, though. And she's gonna fall. Goodbye, Diaspora. That's a good pickoff, but it's just the Venge. Venge is the Radiant lowest, uh, lowest net worth hero. And if we go ahead and we open up our graphs over here, we're seeing a huge just advantage here over on Snackers. 10k at 23 minutes is... How do they... How, how does Duckies come back? Duckies so come back? Uh, they're gonna have to hit their Wombo combo. They have the Ravage, they have the Ice Blast, they have all this magical damage up on uh, the Gyro. So if they can hit some heroes, a lot of heroes. <laughs> I mean, we're gonna see a Radiance onto the bear. And a little bit here. That'll help, but I don't think it's gonna be enough. I mean, they have a mech already. Too. Or they have Greaves already. Yeah. That's... So, Radiance is, uh... The item is good, but if you have counterplay to it already, it's not gonna be amazing. And it was the Glimmer Cape off on the Lich. <laughs> Told you it was going to be a Glimmer Cape. And again, Slark pinging out. There is definitely vision on top of this. This whip over here. And Slark is sitting at 10,000 net worth now. Almost got a full Scotty. That's terrifying. <laughs> Like, you think he's hard to kill now, like, with the Scotty on top of it? Oh, he's unkillable now. He's... He's gonna be the last person in every fight to die. Here's the Radiance. Radiance if, is up if on the Radiance. If the Dire wins. Oh, well, the Blink right. tied. They have... They have the initiation. Let's see if they can use it. Are they gonna go for Roche? It looks like they're... They're pinging it out. They're the Radiant aren't really sure what they want to do right now. I don't think you want to go really that. I don't think you want to go Roche unless you know that Tidehunter or someone is down. You need to pick first. And they're gonna immediately go and check for it. The Ice Blast, but... We are seeing That's no Ice Blast again, 30 seconds. I think he's throwing it out a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see him save it for fights. But they don't really have a way of getting vision otherwise. Other than like sending the bear, I guess they could do that. They should. They should do that. Sark's like just gonna take the time. Go ahead, jungle up. And he's not. There's one sentry in here. And that's a good ward up for the radiant. So did the typical uh, range of this. Mm -hmm. This cliff ward. Oh, and the smoke by the Radiant. Venge and Abaddon looking for someone. Maybe? No, I think no just they just on a warding out. mission. Which is smart when you consider that, you know, both Quap and the, uh, the Slark are always looking for pickoffs here. So giving them that vision will help a lot. It looks like they're gonna go on this tower. Slark behind the tower. He should go in AA. Like, he can go right now if he wanted to. They have the jump in. Looks like they're gonna be zoned out. Hmm. Abaddon taking a little bit too much damage. There's the Ice Blast. Ooh. Oh, it hits on Abaddon. Oh, there's Firefly, though. I think Slark's thinking about going on Lion here, maybe? Yeah, no. there's a lion. Oh, He's gonna yeah, go ahead and ground on him. They're gonna be able to clean him up. Here comes the bomb. Oh, he is a ravage oh, coming nice out. Ravage. The He's gonna fall here. Die high also in a lot of trouble. Gonna be me. Turn it around. 
12 coming out. Oh, look how much damage that Chain Frost is doing, though. It's going to be so a close to die. Almost took out Juggalot. Almost took out the AA. There's no accident anymore. The Lion bought back for that, but he didn't really need to. If they had one more scream up, that's that's three dead. Yeah, that three was a more lot dead. Of that came out. <laughs> Gyro, and please. that's a huge net worth changer right there. The call down hit so many. Ravage hit five. That's Ravage is such a good ability. Like it, it, it is the team fight ability. Gyrocopter go just got one point. Uh, sorry, um, sixteen hundred gold off of that fight. That's huge. Holy. That's huge. That is some much needed gold infusion. Also, please turn on your turn on your Aquila, please. <laughs> oh, it's on! Oh, it's on! I think he's been toggling on and off all game. You think it's hitting on like one of the one of the keys? Yeah, I think he's he's got an alt key there, maybe. and a, the one underneath it, maybe. I don't know. Seen him play with it a little bit. Ibi up on the cloth. She didn't get to use it that fight. Um, she used it after the ravage, and that that is defining. Probably for that needed fight. to pop that when she ran in, honestly. But and now there's a hyper zone up on the bear. Shadow Strike is so good against the bear. That fear spell. Oh, they're gonna stun out the bear. They're trying to take him out here. Well, he can't return. It's, it's got oh, Shadow swap. Strike on it. Let's That's a dead, dead bear. bear. Nice. Six seconds on the resummon. But that's, that's... It's still a lot of gold. That's still the still resummon. And we do have a Scotty over here on the Slark. Slark also sitting with his Aquila off. On now. Are they listening? I don't know. I don't <laughs> think no, they can hear me, right? I hope not. Looking for the ward. They shouldn't be able to A little bit off the mark. And there's there's a cloak up on Abaddon. So they are gonna get a pipe, just not on the Lich. Okay, that makes sense. Probably the better choice. Ooh, that is gonna connect with Daihan here though. Still with the arcane rune, I think they can fight. Even into Ravage. They just need to not all get hit with the Ravage this time. I mean, if the Radiant Ooh, the get off their village... Out. Nice Ravage coming out from Trump here. They're trying to go here. The X Penguin's gonna get proc ulti. There's gonna be the Chain Cross going on. BKB is up on Chocolate trying to go and click him down. That's where in a lot of trouble here. This is gonna probably Start going back in. Back here, Daihai still throwing out the right clicks, trying to go on Chocolate. Is gonna be able to think out. Oh, is that oh, Tower of Not nice gonna be enough. Kill. But that's gonna be a dead lich on and top. And coming on the Lone Druid. And here comes Slark cleaning up until Slark and uh, Fop, the only one standing. What a team fight. Lone Druid got 1,000 gold out of that and uh, Fop did as well. There's a little bit of spaghetti from the Slark. He spaghetti? He used his uh, spaghetti, yeah. He used his Shadow Dance immediately to go in, but he didn't need to because okay. there were no stuns up. And uh, he went immediately onto the Gyrocopter. And as soon as Shadow Dance was off, he left out. But need to. The, everyone was dead at that point except for the Lone Druid. He could have gone on the Gyro still, killed him before the Gyro got the kill on the Abaddon. So, still uh, spaghetti, uh, but like not so phrase. bad. I like the phrase spaghetti. <laughs> I never heard that one before. Uh, mom spaghetti. That's uh, that's. I'm sure you've heard oh, that. Mom spaghetti. Yeah, I've heard that. I just haven't heard the plain old spaghetti there. Uh, Daya is sitting on a lot of gold. Is gonna go for a sheep stick next? You think? Does have a uh, void stone? Maybe. Maybe a refresher. I don't think refreshers the item this game. Sheep stick is good. I'm thinking sheep stick. Um, Lincoln's is good as well. Or, or even like a. You could go for Yules, but it's not the best. I don't best. think it's gonna go Yules now. I think we're probably gonna see. Uh... I think we're probably gonna see the hex, but yeah, sheep. I think hex so early doesn't necessarily. Oh, and we I missed the pick off the bottom. And Slark is gonna be a slippery fish okay. and run away here. We've got twelve kills over here. Even if you use Shadow Dance. 
There was no Shadow Dance needed there. Oh, because Jaro doesn't have the TP, otherwise he was safe. He needs to drop that dust for a TP, give it to support. And we're seeing that there's going to be a mech over here fairly shortly over on the Tidehunter. Ancient Apparition's working on that Axis two pieces now. Seeing some item progression after a couple of these fights, but uh, I don't think it's going to be enough. I mean, still, the, the Tidehunter is behind the Lich. That's not, not good. <laughs> but uh, we can see the Lone Druid is on par with Slark. Mm. So each with 14k net worth. And the Lone Druid does farm faster. He has the Midas, he has the Salt Curus. And he has the uh, Radiance up on on his bear. <laughs> They ha oh, they're gonna go ahead and smoke here in mid. I was about to say, you know, they just... There's so much burst damage coming out of this clop right now, and Lone Druid himself is not a tanky character at all. Well, I mean, he's actually... Let's see. Mm -hmm. He's got 2.2k. 2.3k. I guess I'm thinking about earlier. Oh, and like, really 24 here. armor. <laughs> Bottom lane is pushing in, so they're not gonna fight anything with the smoke. And looks like back to the farm game. I'm surprised that no one's trying to go for a Roche here. Like get a pick and go for Roche. I mean, I don't really like Roching when the opponent has a Tide Hunter. Well, that's and what I'm saying. You know, get, a, get a pick off. Try to get a pick on it. I mean, even with the pick off, though, they have so much AoE team fight. It's a little bit hard to do. Die high 12 and 0. He's really uh, carrying his team, putting the team on his back. On his, on his feathery wings, his lady wings. Is that a beauty mark on Queen of Pain? I think yeah, it, it is. Yeah, it looks like it. That uh, old world classic glamour there. Oh, and the four Radiant Heroes... Ooh, Firefly! Firefly's caught out here! Is oh, gonna be able to get away, but though. But Slark not using their back in time. I'm gonna send the bear forward here, but it looks like he's gonna get me summoned. And it looks like they're thinking about going high ground. Just well, kidding, or not. <laughs> Abaddon does have the pipe, so they can. I think, like, you're, you're pushing into a Ravage though, no one likes doing that, nope. Ravage is too good. I'm seeing the BKB come out for the Slark now. Daihai's sitting on a lot of gold here, I'm interested to see what he's going to pick up next, because he does have that Bloodstone. I think he should well, definitely buy off. something. He needs to use his gold. Like, yeah, even if you're 4k, uh, if you're 4k above the gyrocopter, and you're 4k on your hero, that means that you are pretty much on par with the gyro, so he should really be spending his gold. But they are going for Roche, they have a medallion, they have Abaddon, they can take this relatively quickly, and Slark can still show, so. You know, with the wave of terror and the, uh, the medallion of here, they should be able to take it very, very easily. And uh, Slark can kind of just move around, let them think that they're still, you know, just doing the farming game. And Slark coming back. Oh, I think this is what he's talking his Ring of Aquila so no one can see where he is when he uh, uses level. his Shadow Blade. I mean, he's expecting the Dire to be next level, and that's why he's. Uh... <laughs> I like it. Pipe is on cooldown. Pretty right? clever. Pipe is on Should be up in about 12 seconds here. They're gonna be going for the high ground push. I like that they went for the Roche before they decided to uh, go push. There's a lot of wards everywhere here though. Firefly making sure that he's uh, got vision wherever he can. An interesting choice putting the Aegis up on the Slark. Slark isn't oh, the best pretty, Aegis carrier. And he's he's tanky. He's unkillable. He's able much. to live. He's got the BKB. He's only I kind of, yeah, I kind of wish they put it on the Quap. 
the pop has the same amount of uh, re-goose potential, but because he has the Agni, or she has the Agni Scepter, the 40 second cooldown on Sonic Wave, I think that's the better choice. And it is going to be the Hex up on the Quap. Okay. Hex is coming out now. I like how they've already initiated into this without the Quap here. <laughs> and Slark just still there, still hitting the tower, no fear. Here's the sheep stick over onto the Quap now. They're about ready. And they do have wards out here, though. They are going to be able to see the item pick up. But initiation is going to be everything. Mm -hmm. well, I think they're just going to keep throwing the Slark in there with the space, considering he has the Aegis. Let them use everything on the hero that's very difficult to kill anyways. And then just dive in with the follow-up. Yep, here comes the uh, a Blast, blast. Again. And they dodged it. Stun coming out onto the bear. Cool coming down. Out onto... Oh, this is really tough to break into here. They have been getting quite a few pop shots though onto the tower. Tower's about half health here. And they're slow pushing this. Mm -hmm. No need to commit. It's gonna be when the oh, dire wants you. to commit. Oh. Oh, There's the Tide and Geralty coming in, going on DX Penguin Man over here, also going out onto the Slark. They're gonna be able to- Oh, oh that Chain Frost coming out! Looking really, really please. nice here. Chocolat's backing off. Die High's going on to Tip Tip Fedora. Gonna be able to clean up the Firefly. Also gonna take down the Lone Druid. Chocolat coming forward again. The Aegis is gonna pop. Or didn't pop. I thought they saw an Aegis. Oh my gosh. She's not dead. And He's there, that's gonna fighting. be the Gyrocopter. He's gonna kill Gyrocopter under the two tier fours. Gyrocopter by his back. He's still going in and- the Abaddon coming to grab his, his fish friend. They're going to be able to take those axe there. Buyback coming out over here on the gyrocopter. Still has the Aegis. Man, I could have sworn I saw oh, the, uh, up, like, the tombs pop off, but... He's going to dodge that as well. The, he keeps sending the homing missile at the Slark, who just keeps dark packing it off mm -hmm. immediately. So, I wonder if they're trying to... Oh, look at that Leaf! Leaf is going to come out onto oh, the AA, and there's going to be the... He's gonna go ahead and use the old chuckle out. It's turned into a big DX Penguin chasing after him. No need to really chase here, guys. I think they should just go for that tower and uh. The Sonic Wave was up so quickly thanks to the Agnum Scepter and gets another pickoff. Mm -hmm. Well, and if they kill the, uh, if they kill be... Darkopter again, that's a dieback. So we have to be really careful here. We're gonna go on to him, and here comes the call down. The native's gonna come forward here, turn around, go on to the gyrocopter. Gyrocopter has BKB, he's still time. hitting the Abaddon though. There's the swab coming out as well. That might be a dieback over here. On the yeah, that's gonna be a dead gyrocopter. Oh, he's dead. Die that coming might in, gonna clean up Firefly as well. Here comes the Ice Blast. Using the Fierce Ball. The Fierce Ball might have actually uh, again. saved Die yeah, High from getting that. Yeah. BKB coming up again on Slark. Now they're all coming up from Die High. Like we said earlier, uh, this is a team that can disengage and then get right back in very, very quickly. And there's the GG call from Slark. Has... Oh, GG. I'm gonna say Slark, he's stolen 28 agility over the course of that time. Essence so... shift is ridiculous, er, so. Sorry, 90 agility, 28 stacks. So, you can't fight. You can't fight like Slark that. is a balanced hero. <laughs> I think it's safe to say that we're gonna see a, uh, a respect ban on the Slark next game. What do you think? I think the the Quaff was the main player up in uh, on too. Snacker's team, but that was excellent play up from the Slark. Great job to Snacker's taking game one. All right, we'll be right back, guys, with game number two. Stay tuned.
Alright guys, welcome back. This is game number two of Fire Breathing Duckies vs. Snackers. I am your caster Moxie. Co-casting with me is Koraemon. How's it going? And uh, we're back into game number two. First game going to Team Snackers. So. Gonna see some bands coming out right away. The Invoker ban and the OD ban. If I was Duckies, I would definitely ban that Qua. Quapper Slark, when are they together? Yeah, those two heroes just ran the game. Agreed. They just had complete control and could run wherever they wanted. That now being said... Now oh, sorry. Now comes the problem, sorry, though, is if they ban the Quap, they leave Death Prophet in the pool. So Death Prophet is... Now, I, I think this is the better choice, because you're not going to pick Quap up in the first pick. Uh, and if you do... There's a lot of ways to counterplay it. You can pick something like a Skyrath Mage if you're wanting to go very, very uh, counter pick heavy. Oh, and they do pick it. They don't care. They say my Quap is the best player, They'll and Die High is gonna he's gonna take it. Would have been interesting. It's, oh, there's gonna be the Bane. <laughs> and the face Bane and, and Void. Faces. Team Purple coming out from Fire Breathing Duckies. Lots of lockdown. And Ventral Spirit again. Ventral is such a good hero. Especially with like Aether Lens now and. Uh... Didn't really feel her presence last game though. The Wave of Terror was great in the early game for zoning out the uh, Hide Hunter, but that's about it. There are a couple like, nice swaps. The swaps were, yeah, they were okay, but they weren't needed because they could just jump in. So we'll see. Just got a nice solid stun too on top of that. Plus the Vengeance Aura is really really nice when you're pushing. Ten seconds remaining. So respecting the Gyro, Radiant Bandit out, the out this turn, and the Slark is gone. <laughs> That's a good ban there. I don't think you want that in the pool anymore. Especially after last game. That Slippery Fish, man. Ten seconds remaining. So something that's going to be important for both sides Five is... The Radiant, they might want to silence for the Faceless Void. And for the Dire, they might want a silence for the Queen, Queen of Pain. Although Faceless Void and Bane, they're very good against these squishy heroes like Vengeful Spirit and Queen of Pain if they can jump on top of them. But Venge, also good because they can swap them out. Well, do you think we're going to see a uh, an Orchid now over on Queen of Pain for this game? I don't think... It, it really depends on what type of lineup they want to pick. If they pick a team fight lineup like last time, where they can fight over and over again, then the Ags is definitely the choice, but Orchid is good against Faceless Void, and you do need some lockdown so that you can't get a full Fiend script off on uh, anyone on the Radiant side. But you also want to be tankier, which is why Ags is good, because if you get Chronosphere or if you get Fiend Script, you want to be able to survive it. Taking some time for this ban. Witch That's a good doctor. pick. That's a good pick to take out here. You don't want to be chrono and have a Witch Doctor be railing on you the whole time. Also fits the purple theme. <laughs> Maybe they're just worried about Team Purple now. I mean, they're banning out all bluish-green heroes and picking all purple heroes. Excuse me. And taking some time to think about their ban as well. Enchantress. Enchantress is such a good hero this patch. Oh man. It's one of my favorite heroes anyways. Um, but especially lately. Okay, there's gonna be and a Sky Rage pick. There's the Sky Rath. Well, that this makes, is what I was saying. Well, that makes, it makes so much sense because we've got a Faceless Void, so if they can get a Chrono through the Sky Rath Mage, uh, the Mystic Flare down on top of it. Are they gonna pick the same lineup? They have a Lich now. I mean, they can't because their Slark is gone, but... They're really favoring their comfort heroes, it looks like. Well, if it's not broke. So Skyrath Mage, of course, with Ancient Seal. 
can silence the Queen of Pain for up to six seconds once it's maxed. And then Mystic Flare works beautifully with Chronosphere and with Fiend's Grip. Um, the early game, though, is where it shines, but you can also jump on the Skyrath Mage, and he's a squishy hero. Do you think he's going to be a mid Skyrath, or are they going to try to surround him as a support? I think... Well, I was going to say mid, but now that the Wind Ranger is picked, it's more likely Wind Ranger is going to be going mid. Yeah, that makes sense, because they'll probably send the Faceless Void into the offlane and then use the uh, the other two as support zone. Probably, uh, I'm thinking a tri-lane, yeah? Over on Fire Breathing Duckies? It, it is. They have the uh, setup for it, so It'd be pretty strong. it would be good. I would not like to see Napadon here. It does not do enough. Oh, Spectre good, Spectre. I like that. Haunt will be killing the Skyrath Mage. Like, yep. it's yes, not just absolutely. gonna... Yes. It's just gonna kill her over and over again. So then, what do they pick for an offlane here on Snackers? What do you think is the choice here? I think you want some lockdown. I think Tidehunter is a pick that worked very well last night for Fire Breathing Duckies. It could work very well this game for Snackers. And if you wanted to, you can run it with the Lich. So there is, is that potential. Of course, Bane and Skywrath are superheroes for uh, Zonio, any solo hero, so it'll be hard. And Tidehunter is banned. I had the right call. Yep. Or maybe just a similar call to them. I feel like this is going to be over on Snackers currently. They need to get the initiation first. If they get the initiation first, I think they have an advantage here, especially, you know, with the Spectre just haunting in. But that puts a lot of pressure onto the Queen of Pain because I feel like Quap is going to be the one doing most of the initiation. And, and you never want to have Quap initiate. No. So I feel like they need a strong, strong offlaner here. And they ban a Juggernaut. Juggernaut so what do they is good. For inside of the Chrono here, or do they go for someone that'll go inside the Chrono? I mean, they have enough damage with the Wind Ranger and the Skyrath Mage. They might not need it. But you could pick something hyper carryish, like the Sven you were mentioning last game. Sven That's matches up very well with Spectre. Ten seconds remaining. Five I don't know. I I think that I like Sven, remaining. but you could pick a lot of heroes for Fire Breathing Duckies here, and they'd Reserve still have a very cohesive lineup. Because you definitely want to be careful that you don't pick, um, you know. Anyone too too squishy, because they're just gonna become food for, for the quap. And the Spectre especially too, especially once she gets radiance. You might even be able to pick like a weaver though. Even if it is a squishy hero, they don't have the initiation and they don't have enough lockdown for uh, something like that. What about the burn coming off a of Spectre though? Isn't that gonna And the burst damage too coming off of the Queen of Pain? I'm not sure a Weaver's a great choice here. Luna. Luna. And Luna. Luna. Radiant team pick. Well, Luna works. And is purple. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we take here over on Snackers? Oh, they're gonna get the razor Ra here. Is this an off Yeah, that's an Queen offline razor. Oh, you mean Queen of Pain? No, Queen of Pain's gonna be Die High Mid. DX Penguin Man will be playing the razor offline. This is an interesting draft. All right, guys. Well, welcome to game number two. This is the Nota Winter Tournament. This is Team Snackers versus Fire Breathing Duckies. Game one went to Team Snackers. And uh, yeah, we're going into this game right now. Over on the Dire, we have Chocolat, who will be playing our Luna. Mimerfly, or Firefly, will be playing our Bane. We do have a Saint Cat Bull, who will be playing our Skywrath Mage. Spella will be playing our Wind Ranger. And Tip Tip Fedora will be playing our Faceless Void. And on the Radiant, we have Ding DX Penguin Man up on that offlane Razor. We have 
Bendium, Silver, Iodine, Sodium up on the Spectre. Pig on his Lich again. We have Daihai up on Co-op again. And Diaspora up on the Vengeful Spirit again. And good luck have fries. Apparently that's a thing. <laughs> Alright, so there... right, where do you think we're gonna see this first blood? Offlane oh, Razor. Actually, I think he, he might even die trying to get the rune here. He has a stout shield, not the best item on a ranged hero, but Razor is a good uh, candidate. He does want to be as tanky as possible. Well, I think he's expecting he's gonna get a lot of harass. Which is why he picked that up. They're gonna definitely back off, just let Spello pick up the, uh, the bounty rune, and uh, Vanadium will be able to take the bounty rune bottom. As well. So again, poor Diehide, not gonna be able to get any runes so far in these games, uh, for first rune anyways. But we'll probably be able to make up for it. If it was anything like last game anyways. Uh, interesting to note that they're not try laning to keep the Spectre safe here. I'm not- I mean, hmm. I mean, if it's just a Void, it's, it's not, not a bad. problem. Yeah, if it's just a Void. And Lich plus one does put a lot of pressure on a safe lane, so... It's a Razor, and Razor doesn't do well if she's shut down, so I hope he doesn't get shut down. They really uh, like unstable running, current. Like, the uh, duo lanes, too, yeah. over here. Yeah, I think Lich plus one is a very, very good off lane, but uh, unstable current is very good against Skyrath in the mid game, Luna in the mid game, and Bane, but I don't know. Razor just it doesn't feel right to me. <laughs> Razor needs to pick up a stick too, definitely, with this lane being what it is. And Faceless Void, no fear. Standing right at the creep wave. Meanwhile in mid, looks like Stello is currently winning the CS war here with 6 and 4. They're having a little bit more trouble this game, sitting with 3 and 0 currently. That's pretty right interesting. Hmm? I mean, this this matchup should be even, or very close to even. Wind Ranger should be behind right now, actually, until he gets like level five for the level three power shot. So the fact that Die High is a little, little bit behind right now, that's not the greatest. You don't want to be behind uh, the Wind Ranger when you're co-op. Oh, and Razor, Ooh. they're getting going on top. Oh, but a late concussive shot. Press the pick as he can be fine. Yeah. Interesting and they to get out that Bane hasn't gone and uh, skilled anything quite yet. A brain sap might have. Let's see here. This brain sap does a decent amount of damage early. Ninety. But uh, I think nightmare would be the right call here. So you can set up on heroes? Well, just because he had left it unskilled, uh, you know, just yeah. thinking about what he wants to pick at that moment, that might have been a good choice there. And we are going to get a haste <laughs> over here onto the clop. And Void is doing a good job down here in the, the bot lane. He's able to still get all of his levels here, sitting at level 3. Got a couple last hits as well, so... I mean, this is just dirty. The Void doesn't have to worry. Oh, he bashes the Spectre. Getting a lot of he's not worried, he's just gonna... About going yeah, but he just, uh... Well, it's faded out now, so... He, he just time walks. Yeah, but 10 seconds and it's back. That's true. Inspector, he's low. He does have a solve, still. So. Oh, man, they just... Top lane! Um, lane. Blood going. Oh, no, we missed it. A very long range arcane bolt and uh and the loosened beam pick him off. It's hard to dual lane into a Luna, because Lunar Prelassing does uh it gives your tri lane so much kill potential. There's so much range because of Skyrath Mage 
and the Luna's uh, Lucent Beam, it it hits surprisingly far. Well, I mean, they've got decent kill potential here anyways. The uh, Bane has picked up Brain Sap and the Nightmare here, so he's able to just really phase out this Lich. Plus and we mix another that, kill oh, bottom. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Faceless Void does go down. We're fired. No OSG Frog this time, but... Spectre farming really, really well here, sitting at 26-2. He's maxing Dispersion. I don't know. I'm not I don't sure know again, about but... The dispersion here. I think uh, Desolate would have been really good here, because it's the solo Faceless Void. I think uh, either Desolate or you max your Stagger yeah. for... Uh, for the mid-game fights, I mean, they have quick heroes, but they're not that quick. And the oh mid lane, power shot misses. If it hit, that was a dead quap. Interesting to note that quap's having a really difficult time dealing with the wind ranger this game. Void has found that they've got a bit of a stack going on over here, and that they're pulling. Sylvanadium getting a good amount of farm down here, sitting at 33 and 2. Next closest is the Wind it looks Ranger. Like, the wind. It looks like he's going to be going for the Aquila build. And, uh, interesting tree placement. Uh, well, the Tango's on cooldown, so it's going to eat that tree. But there's a happy momentarily. little tree. Um, nom 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 nom. Uh, Void should have walked <laughs> up and talented that. Oh, that would have been so mean. And hilarious. And sassy. And again, another haste rune for Die High here. He is level 6 at this point, and we are seeing the Wind Ranger has the bounty rune. Oh, some movement going on top. They're trying to go over on DX Penguin Man again. Is that going to be able to see? Yeah, I think that's going to be a dead razor. Oh, he's dead. dead <laughs> that's another kill for Luna here. So oh, Die High is going in. Oh, but he's not going to get this kill. He Break the haste. Yeah, oh, that's going to be a dead. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a dead. The haste just Ranger the haste. does TP in, but the haste just lets him get out. And it's gonna be Still, Press the Pig does go down at the same time. Well, I mean, Trying to help out the clock, but... Um, where the, uh, the two offlaners didn't have the best laning phase, but they were still able to come back nice and strong because of the fact that they were dedicating a lot of time and uh, paying attention a lot to top. But last time, it was also an Abaddon. And sure. Abaddon is a hero that can be a support as well. He doesn't need the farm. Razor, he doesn't catch up well in the mid game and he needs farm. He went poor man's shield. He's got boots, poor man's shield, seven minutes in. That's it. That's nothing. Yeah, What's his comeback mechanism? Voids off to do a little bit of jungling, it looks like here. <laughs> Skyrath Mage, very, very low here. It's gonna fall. Let's just gonna be able to get that last hit. I didn't see what happened there, but I don't think it should have happened. I think <laughs> the Skyrath was just out of position. Yeah, well, we saw if we open up the uh, the fight recap. I had with the, the smoke looking top. They have the sonic wave, they hit the max oh man, range low for here. Uh... Oh. oh. Looks like they're gonna Smoke run away, range. they realize yeah. that uh, there's some movement because there is a ward over Dyer's here. There is a ward, and they see him. That's a ward that uh, saved them last time as well from the slark. Mm. We're gonna see them kind of wrap around maybe? Oh, they're, they're seeing the vision though, they're seeing that Quap is backing off now. It's gonna be able to get an arcane rune, that's pretty good. For a quap. And uh, Spell is going to go ahead and use his ultimate on the tower here, but Quap's going to come in right behind him, throw out that Shadow Strike and a Sonic Wave and chase him away. Top Same lane! Top. Press the pig! I'm going to fall again. And this can happen over and over again. I think the Lich has to play even farther back. Mm -hmm. But they have the lane ward, so they can see where he is. 
and the Razor moving forward. Bane's get, trying to get in position. No dice. They really need a ward on the side here too, I feel. Like having a ward over here for Radiant would really help them when they know that someone's coming around the corner on them. I mean, they do have the sentry ward as well, which makes it a little difficult. But uh, I feel like that would be very helpful. And again, tip tip for Dora. He hit six, but they're not going to fight around him immediately. I think they should, but... Luna's six as well. Oh, there's going to be oh, a lot Gahan. coming up. And, uh, Getting mid lane. I mean, Sonic Wave and Han for one kill. Not the best, but that's still that's the Wind Ranger. The Wind Ranger is the highest up on uh, last hits and denies for the dire side. So good trade, good pick off. Also gonna help uh, snowball the squap again. She's sitting here. another haste rune. That's the third haste rune this game. And she sells an arcane rune in honor. Are they gonna go top? Uh, they they know there's vision. Does not have Sonic Wave. Is gonna be going for the Ags right off the bat though again. And uh, seeing the Vengeful Spirit also rotate top, we're seeing someone TP in though as well, and that's going to be the Wind Ranger. So they've got a lot of vision, they know that uh, there's a Vengeful Spirit sitting down here in the... in the river. Leaving the... <laughs> leaving the Spectre alone, hmm. And four are top, but they're not doing anything just yet. Bane getting into position, gets the Nightmare, press the pig. Taking a nap over here, pressing it. Should be able to get a shackle. There's a shackle getting put on. There's a big sign. So they're going to use the Lunar Eclipse over here as well. I'm not a little sure bit overkill, but they that. got it. But they were very excited, I'm guessing. They just... They're like, now's Maybe my time. they were worried like, about the time. heroes going in, because they, they knew the Vengeful Spirit was there. They knew that the Razor was there. So, just making sure. Meanwhile, Securing the kill. That has just getting some more free farm here. And uh, Faceless Boy bullying the Spectre a little bit. Do you have an urn up on the Spectre now? Ooh, they're going after the Spectre here. There's gonna be the uh, Oh, is he gonna up. die? Bash? If he bashes again, oh. he can get out, he can get Maybe out. Maybe he might be able to get out. Oh, that dagger. dagger! There's the Jukes! That's gonna be a oh. nice blood! Well played coming out from nice. the here. He's and done. he's gonna be able to heal himself up with that well-earned uh, earn charge. Well, top lane, press the pig's gonna go charge. top lane, throw that, uh, that ward out, and they don't have a sentry anymore over in that area to find him out. Oh, he's gonna get caught though onto the tree. Oh, there's gonna be the ultimates coming out oh, from both the heroes. Luna's gonna, 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 be, Luna's gonna again? fall here. They're still going towards, they're gonna be able to take out the Skywrath Mage, and they're turning on Spellow. Spellow oh, trying to get for away. Ranger. Gonna be able to just win run, and should be able to, uh, be safe. Oh, here comes Firefly, Bane the Firefly. Coming. Just... Nope. Or just nope. casually walks away. That was really good for the uh, Radiant over here. And Dahai's gonna get himself a double damage rune. Spell is already a little injured here. He does have the Sonic Wave available. I think I'd like to wait until level 2 alt before I... Because the, the jump from level 10 to 11, very, very quick. So, probably gonna wait on level 11 before he wants to use it again. Well, he did already pop the double damage rune as well. I think he just did it for more so for mana. And he's just Pressure on the his, tower. Uh, yeah, should be able to get this tower right now. No yeah. deny attempt. Bottom lane! We're seeing the uh, Skyrath Mage coming forward. Skyrath Mage is gonna just die down here. Yikes. Made him still coming forward. Does have Haunt available. They do not have enough for I think the, you uh, might have, have expected the, uh, the Chrono. Magic Missile yet. They do have the Frost Blast though. Void has time walk up as well. And is Spectre going to be going yeah, this... next? Sitting I mean, with Max Suspersion, yeah. fine. It's it's fine. He's tanky. Yeah. So, I mean, if not Radiance, Radiance is great this game. But if not Radiance, what do you think he should get? Manta's fine. Mm. Even Diffusal is pretty good this game if you want to like, get rid of the silence. Yeah, Diffusal. I was thinking that, but. I think Radiance, I mean... Radiance, I think it's a I little mean, too early to get a Diffusal, because you're not really worried about uh, those types of things just yet. You want to be able to do your own stuff rather than worrying about counterplaying the opponent's stuff. Does that make sense? <laughs> that makes sense. No, no, no. 
I was thinking in terms of, uh, you know, we wanted to see this Spectre just farm and then like also go in for ganks as well. It's really good for that too. Uh, we're gonna and a pause. But um, Radiance on Spectre, just any time, any time of day. So good. So let's compare these mid lanes. We see the Wind Ranger, she has up a point booster. Whereas Quap has the point booster plus Almost two of the components Almost for the Ags. Very close. Uh, that being said, the Wind Ranger does have phase boots, so it's it's relatively like it's it's almost like there's only one component more up for the Quap. Well if we look at the net worth right now, they're very, very close. They're neck and neck here about a thousand gold apart from each other. Uh, we are seeing that Team Snackers though definitely has the advantage to go ahead and open up the graphs. And again, that is, we do have the Spectre sitting at uh, 1 and 0, the mid spending at 2 and 0. Meanwhile, over on Duckies, Luna has three kills under her belt, one death, a couple of assists. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the item progression is just better here over on, on the Quamp, it seems. Because that Ags is going to be a big item. And Razor has a vitality <laughs> booster right now. They see, they see an enemy. They see the bane. And Quap wants to go. That's what it looks like. My so question there's is how did the they vitality see the bane? booster up on the Razor. They uh, the they've smoked. been here. Oh, they, oh, I've, they oh, do they not see the right bane. There? Uh, it looks like it. Yeah, it looks like he smoked just now. Yeah, so they definitely saw that smoke occurring. That's why they're pinging him out. So I think this, this is going to be the Vanguard Radiance, uh, sorry, Vanguard uh, Razor. He did start with the Stout Shield, that upgrade to Poor Man's Shield, but now he's got a Vitality Booster. And I'm curious what it's going to be. Could be the Rod of Athos. It's not a bad item up on Razor. No, but... that would be a good item for him to pick up. It's another um, Disable as well. But it's not like you're gonna go heart first on Razor. So, no, no, that's could be not. a casual vid booster. Definitely. You never know. And it looks like he's gonna be maxim current next. <laughs> it's the last time I casted a Razor game. Static Link is the ability that makes you OP. <laughs> so, you want that ability. Like, every, every hero in Dota has an ability that makes them OP to some degree. But you want that ability, typically. Like, you got Earthshaker's Fissure, you got, uh... Uh, Quap's all of her damage, Spectre's, uh, Haunt. Like, these abilities make you strong. And something defining for Razor is that damage steal. Alright, we're gonna see the Haunt come out right away. We're gonna see what they're gonna go out onto the, uh... The Bane. Oh, the silence coming out. They're just gonna be slow. They're gonna be able to clean up though. And, uh... and the Spectre is stuck over here struggling now. to get out, but he's fine. So, what's your opinion? Is Spectre a male or a female? Oh, definitely a lady. Spectre's a lady. I don't know. Definitely a lady. She's voiced by Ellen McLean. But. Like, she's kind of a purple beast. She's a lady. She's got a pretty dress. She's got a ladylike voice. I mean, I think she's a lady. And they're gonna go ahead and just push this tower right here. Move throughout the fort. They do oh, Razor's gonna get immediately nightmared here. There's gonna be the shaft on top the of that. That's a dead Razor. Oh, the chain that. frost coming out though. Oh. Bouncing around. Getting a couple decent bounces. Not gonna really be enough though. Oh, and they're gonna take out the sky. He's getting out. Chase is going to continue to chase. He has the Chronosphere. Razor gets set out. Skywrath dies. Are they going to be able to finish this push? I hope I so. Well, the chain we still is have uh, Razor's ultimate is down as well. That's going to be yeah. And Luna's getting low. Yeah. yeah, but they get it. Meanwhile, bottom though, Spectre just able to farm. 
seven hundred off of the six hundred off of the relic. <laughs> No, I was joking earlier, um, Libby and I casted a game a couple nights back where uh, one of the teams, they actually went naked Radiance on Spectre, like no boots or anything, and uh, the, re the phrase was, uh, real woman don't need face boots, naked Radiance, and I went to the gym earlier today, and I was like, you know, I should make a t-shirt that says, uh, just a Spectre working out and uh, hashtag Naked Radiance underneath it because making fun of all those like really crunchy gym people that like are all about Radiance, the inner glow, it, releasing your inner goddess sort of thing. <laughs> I thought that'd be funny. I don't know, it took a little too much explaining though, so maybe it wasn't that funny. <laughs> At the time, I thought don't it was Don't worry, it was an in the moment thing, I'm sure. Uh... <laughs> I just run three miles. Leave Faceless me alone. Faceless boy <laughs> dewarding over here. <laughs> And Benji gets a good ward. Looks like they want to push this bottom tower. And we do have the Ags already up on the Quap. We're seeing that the uh, Wind Ranger has two pieces of her Ags now as well. But that uh, that Ags is going to be a big deal over here. And the Relic is up on Spectre. We're gonna Next the stop, Burn Town. Yeah, oh man. And she does have Haunta available here, so if they want to try to go for a fight, they could. Oh, Vision up on the Vengeful Spirit and the Lich. This ward providing a lot for their dire side. But who are oh, they going to jump pig. on? Faceless okay, Void jump jumped in. And... Oh, two men. Oh, two men. That... Oh no, there's the... Oh, immediately Dai going to get grabbed out. Here comes the Lunality on top of that. What a combo. It's looking really good. Dai has going to come forward, though. He's able to secure it. He's going to fall here, though, as well. Spectre has haunted in, is chasing after Chocolate, does not have the uh, the dagger yet. And the, oh, the Razor coming in too. <laughs> Look at this, just chasing this cat lady around everywhere. Spellow's gonna be able oh, to get the Shackle off. Turning around, there's the dagger on top of the urn. And one more hit, that's gonna be a dead cat lady, unfortunately. That was quite, quite the chase. Surprising. And they need to deny this tower. <laughs> That was a kill. That actually, uh, the Nadium was able to get that kill despite the magic missile coming out. And look at the stack. Woo! Not sure Spectre wants to do that yet. <laughs> I think she might wait on her radiance. We're seeing, and next uh, fight she's got, coming, right? she's got uh, got it now. They're looking at the that stack camp. I think they're thinking about wanting to take it over here in the dire. But they're gonna back off. Defend their tower. There's lots of stacks in the jungle, actually. Here, we've got a stack over here. Yeah, there's stacks in... Every camp. Wow. I am super impressed with the stackers' stacking ability here. Oh, and Bane. Uh-oh. He does have his ultimate. Oh, but he gets his ultimate. Yeah, there's gonna be the. Oh, the bounce is and going on to the camp. And the away. This last one. Field. A quick sonic wave picking off the bane. And that's the oh, radiant. Oh, was the razor? The razor was able to actually uh, do the finishing blow there. I think she just hit her. Punched her once. There maybe it was the eye of the storm, one or the other. Now this razor owned uh, the bane here, so I think it was the plasma field actually. Oh no, we'll have to. Doesn't matter either way, but. And here comes. We could check replay. We could check the replay, yeah. Replay, yeah. <laughs> no big deal, either way. I don't think it was like killed there, but. And they don't know And the Radiant are sticking radiant around. The Radiant are sticking around. It looks like they want to go for this push. Sonic Wave is online again. They have Haunt. Chrono is up but on no the cross as well. But... And so is the Lunar Eclipse. Going for the tower deny. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't deny that earlier. And Wood is going to spot them out again, catching Vengeful Spirit and Dance Tango. This Here comes the Haunt coming out. Burn damage so doing much. a lot of damage. Oh man, that's X save there. There's going to be the Shackle coming out. There's the Fiend's Grip over oh, onto the Oh, and the, the Griffin's oh, no! is a Skyrath ult. 
gets the kill and they're and so low. And they're able low, to take out the Luna Are they going to well. be able to oh, get Wind these Ranger, kills? Dead. Gonna be able to run out. Oh, wow, Blinkin, Blinkin. Oh, he doesn't want to blink onto the boy. And TP's out. Oh, what a free for four. Fight. Yeah, and that was a great Chronosphere. We're seeing Lich get a 975 gold It's just going to get harder from here. Finishing that glimmer cave. <laughs> Man, I don't know about you, but when I'm playing games as like uh, position five, just getting arcane boots makes me feel like I'm the richest person alive. Arcane boots on Lich, not the most. I think they're thinking in terms of making item, sure that but the uh, they can make quap, an... the quap always has mana here. She runs through it pretty fast. Yeah. Runs... Alternatively, it might be an Aether Lens later on. I'd like to see that. Because you do want to be sitting very far behind your heroes this game. Mm. That could be it too. I do have the Agnum Scepter over here on the uh, the Wind Ranger. Looks like Lim is going to be And Brazier's got his knife. Yeah, he used that in the last fight. It actually saved the, uh, well, at least prolonged the Vengeful Spirit's life a little bit longer. But we should see the Spectre's farm just explode now. And though Luna has the Helm of the Dominator, they haven't been stacking their Ancients. Yeah, they haven't even been bringing a creep around either. Would like to see that. I am absolutely horrendous at remembering to stack ancients, though, if I have a creep. Oh, there's gonna be a smoke coming out over here? We've got four-man smoke. And it looks like they're gonna be headed top. Maybe using the Luna's bait. And they've drawn two different... Two different this tower's here. gonna go before they can get there. And the are gonna catch out the, oh. the Razor, though. Razor's again, he's got the mech, he's got this Silence vitality coming out. Boost, Mystic he might be so fine. Fast, though. Look at him run! Oh, that Chain Frost! Perfect Chain Frost! Scott with the, the ult there, and they're gonna be able to take him out even though Dance Magma is stuck in that Chronosphere. That was a beautiful Lich ulti there. Oh, and they're gonna find Meemurfly here, gonna throw himself into a nightmare. And they're still gonna be able to clean him up. And that's that's the problem with uh, initiating with Time Walk. You can't uh, Time Walk out if, yep. if they just turn on you. So even though he gets the Chrono off, he dies. And I think his next item has to be a Blink now. They have the lineup that can just burst him down. Luna still has that Eclipse up here. But they're not going to be able to really do anything about this tower. They're going to be able to take it down. Luna almost has a BKB. That will be an important item, but... I mean, that it cannot mean that come soon enough. That doesn't save her from the uh, Pop ulti. But there is the Scream of Pain, there is the uh, Radiance, sure enough, and yeah, there is the Frost Note, or the Chain Frost, excuse me. Yeah, the Chain Frost has been doing a lot of work this game. Seeing some really nice Chain Frost coming out from that Lich. And Luna just wants to go into this jungle. Uh, looks like she does have the BKB finished up. And that'll be very helpful for the next fight. Again, it's one of those situations where whoever gets the initiation first is likely to come out on top, although the Dire is pretty behind at this point. We almost saw a really nice WOM combo in that bottom lane when they had that bottom fight, but it just turned very, very quickly, especially with the Spectre just getting the Radiance. And Lich almost has a Forest Staff here. The thing is, Luna's really short-ranged, mm -hmm. so you have to catch the... Uh... The Chrono has to catch all the Radiant Heroes on the far side, like the close side, that the Luna could even hit them. Yeah. I mean, this game actually wouldn't be the worst if we saw a, uh, a Luna Ads, but again, this would be a very situational team fight. It's also an okay item, uh, the Dragon Lance, this game. On this I actually like Dragon Lance a lot on Luna, uh, before the BKB typically. But it's it's a, it's a good item. I'm not a fan on on her usually, um, but like in this game in particular, 
that would have been probably a good pickup just because, again, the uh, chrono. You gotta just get it just right, and she does have short range. I mean, her attack range is 330 Pretty compared to, like, say, the Skyrath, which is 600. Oh, and that scouts all three heroes there. They're gonna go ahead and attach to the void here. And that should just be the free tower. And time dilation is gonna be on cooldown now. 10 seconds. That is quite the spell. Oh, Razor. Oh, catching Dai Hai. You're gonna swap out the Razor. Oh, they catch three. Dai Hai's gonna be able to blink out. Oh, and they're right on the edge, but there's no follow up. Oh, we're just gonna fall here. The bounce is, though, gonna be able to take out a couple more people here. Firefly's gonna fall as well. Vanadium's still alive. Gonna be able to earn himself, and that's a team wipe coming out for fire breathing duckies. Caught a beautiful chronosphere there with the blink, but any follow up damage immediately because all the heroes were on the far side of the chronosphere mm -hmm. and they need to be on the close side. You saw the eclipse happen after the fact, you saw the Skyrath ult come after the fact. I can't be the way it goes. I mean, they almost had the quap with that, but it just, again, needs to happen a little bit sooner. Do you think this would have been a game for an Aether Lens over onto the Skyrath Mage? I mean, the poor Skyrath Mage doesn't have much farm at all, sitting at the very bottom of the deck. I think, but it might have been I think he just messed up his skill build. If he didn't max Arcane Bolt, like, they have some damage, but I, I wish that he max Agent Sealed this game. I think it's the better choice. Mm -hmm. It's going to be worse in lane, but it'll be better in the mid game. I mean, that instant silence. You have three targets that you kind of <laughs> want to silence immediately. You have the Quap, Ooh, you have the Lich, and it's you have the Venge. So it's not a bad idea. They don't have Chrono up just yet. They might be going for Roche. Oh, sneaky Roche. Roche. This is a risky Roche. They're going to be able to take him down very easily, though, considering that we've got the Focus Fire up on the Wind Ranger. It's just melting. melting. And the Radiant have no idea. The yeah, the Radiant, they don't know. They, they expect fellow, people yeah, over here. Down. There's a Roche on. I'm just going to pick Luna up the just TP herself out. And now I think they, they're gonna contest this tower. Shackle not connecting here. And Razor now with the Vanguard, Mech, and Blade now. So he's a pretty good frontliner. Mm-hmm. We've got the BKB over up on the Quap as well. And we've got a full heart on this uh, Spectre here. This is a very difficult Spectre to kill. Heart I don't think they have enough damage. Minutes in. I don't think oh they have my goodness. Damage. This Spectre is so far ahead. I don't think they can deal with her. They definitely have the damage, but they're gonna need to be able to hit it all. They need like the perfect setup, I think. We see Dai Hai has himself a haster, and he's gonna go ahead and scout out around here. Just killing the Spectre is 500 damage on someone, or 600 damage. This Version is going to be doing so much, and he's so tanky, he can come back into the fights again. And that seems to be the name of the game for these drafts lately over on the, the snack. Oh, Dai Hai going on the bane. I'm going to take a nap there. <laughs> Share that nap with the Razor as well. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. I'm going to pop the Razor ult and just go ahead and take this tower. That's tough. You can actually hit towers until you have an Agonim Scepter. Well, I think scepter, what he's doing is to kind of just scare off the other team a little bit. It deters the, it the battle. Oh, there's oh, gonna be the here's... Chrono. Ooh, the swap coming out. Gonna free up Daihan. He's got the BKB. I'm gonna go over onto the Luna. Try to take down Luna here. Oh, that Chain Frost. It's doing more damage. And that power is still up. And they're gonna be able to take down Chocolate here, I think. <laughs> Inspector's yeah. still full yeah. HP. There goes the, uh, the Aegis, and they're gonna turn immediately onto the Luna. Think. Got no it BKB now. Use the oh, Pop's gonna go right in, chasing after chocolate, diving. That's a dead Luna. And 31 to 13. This isn't looking so great for the Dyer. This is gonna be racked. She has 4k gold. Yep. 
Oh, that okay. shackle though. Shackle. Oh, it's pretty nice. But Limerick where's coming the onto follow them. Flip. They do not have Chrono. I'm trying to go after uh, the Ventral Spirit here. Specker just, just doesn't so... care. Look at her go. Just if running in stood, there. If he stood in. Oh, gonna get. They're gonna use everything in the kitchen sink on her. They're still not gonna be able to it take her down. It doesn't matter. She's gonna live. That's gonna be a dead vein. Spello's gonna have a oh, good run. Oh, there's swap coming into. out. There's the swap. They have a stun. They don't have a stun yet. And that's almost a full team wipe. They're gonna go for Still, they uh, just go bottom. Tower and Rax here. They just go bottom. Spectre's still full HP. Healing up from that heart. And uh, Spello and Chocolate trying to come back in here. But what do they even do? Luna has the BKB up, but... She's not gonna be able to do enough here. BKB popping again. DX Penguin Man. Oh, that, that blade mail. Blade mail. Doing some damage here. And I think that's that's GG. What do you think? Oh, it's it's beyond GG. <laughs> they've they've yeah, there's been a GG oh, there it is. The Spectre. Is <laughs> he has a full. She's full Manta just casually coming up. At 31 the minutes, she's got. She's just so stacked. Oh my goodness. 21k net worth. What a game. Jeez. So Snackers, uh, this game not going to be going to game 3, but the Snackers taking a 2-0 victory. Well done to them. Die high and uh, their mid and their uh, safe lane just controlled both games beautifully. And uh, we'll be right back, guys. We are going to have an interview with the uh, team captain, a representative in this case, of uh, Team Snacker. So stick around. All right, just gonna move them in to unmute them. Hey guys, can you hear me? Hello? Oh, Diaspora. Oh, the Diaspora's asking for push to talk. Um, if you're using oh, the browser, well, you, you can't do push to talk, Diaspora. But if you're using the app, you can set it up. So I don't know what, uh, which one you're using. Hello? There you are. We can hear you. So congratulations on your win, guys. Yeah. It's, uh, thank you. Thank you. Both games saw a lot of really, really good plays coming out. Um, so my first immediate, whoa, is that, is that Diaspora tap typing? <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> yep, that was her. Okay, um, but anyways, yeah, my first uh, first question to you guys is how did it feel letting knowing that you're getting your quap both of those games die high? Uh, well, so we felt pretty confident going into the game with the quap pick. Uh, I was surprised that they didn't bend them out as some of the teams we played in the past, they had been out quap and 
or mid and I had a lot of trouble with that but with for me Quap is like my comfort hero so I was comfortable with laning whoever um, so we had to keep the pace of the game going to make sure that if I created space at mid the other lanes were able to take advantage of it, and we were able to pull off pretty well I think yeah, I could not believe that they let it through. Not only, like the first time, I was like, "Oh, well, maybe they don't. They don't know that Ken plays a really good uh, Quap here." But then they let it through the second time, and that was like baffling to me, to be quite honest. I think they weren't expecting the first pick, Queen of Pain. I mean, we were expecting a first ban. So as soon as we saw that there wasn't a ban, uh, we just picked it right away. Definitely makes sense, especially because when you see people that are playing like at a high level with a certain type of hero, definitely they feel comfortable usually just laning against whatever. So again, very surprised about that. Um, Cry, do you have a question for them next? Yeah, I got. I got to ask. Uh, as you you just said, the Quap is your comfort pick. Uh, we notice you pick the same heroes, the uh, same three heroes: the Lich, the Vengeful Spirit, and the Quap. Both games. Um, uh, do you guys favor comfort pick heroes, or is that something that you, you go into thinking, we want to pick these heroes? We tend to play a little conservatively when it comes to these. I mean, our very first Nota match went pretty crazy. It was like way back in November, so now we tend to stick with the picks we're really good with, the heroes that we know really well. So, Yeah, I know that Diaspora really likes playing the uh, Vengeful Spirit seeing a lot of play with that one and she's a great hero right now too yeah and we're we've had a lot of practice with these heroes um, for some of us they're you know they're like our top played heroes so why go with what doesn't need to be fixed so I was really kind of interested too um, speaking of the vengeful spirit it seems like you usually use her as a position five and most of yeah. the um, why did you prioritize the lich a little bit more than the the venge here like position four lich or yeah the position four instead of position five uh christina five position so, five. so diaspora is a fantastic position five like she really she's able to make the magic happen in terms of setting up the plays and mm -hmm. really watching the map as well as warning for all of us and she knows the timings really really well we yeah, prefer... I noticed the jungle was always stacked like that yeah. I, i'm applauding you on that i mean i don't see many jungles that, that stacked so. Like definitely without her, our carries wouldn't be able to get as far because it's like an additional that. 30 <clears throat> 30 to 40 last hits for the safe lane carry. Um, I was just wondering though, you know, too, because it seemed like, again, the Lich was set as the position for, um, I feel like Venge does really well with a little bit of farm on her as well, especially like, you know, getting an Aether lens and such. Um, so I was just wondering why you guys tended to favor the Lich a little bit more. Is it just because you play a better five than the Lich, or...? I think well, Lich is good for denying creeps. Yeah, so primarily we put the Lich in the off lane against their team. Uh, it worked particularly well in the first game because they had a try lane, so they just get denied even more experience. But it's also um, Christina and our safe lane carry work together really, really well. And the way it's set up is as a position five, support she's able to provide basically a hundred percent of what he needs in lane to get farm i can definitely understand that as i love playing position five as well <laughs> um and definitely like knowing what your what your particular carry needs because every single carry is so different uh definitely makes a big a big difference there vanadium played his brains out both of these games too it's a really good carry. Yeah, he went uh, ten and one on the Spectre, and then on the Slark game, he went nine and one there too. Like, just he got all the everything he needed. I like too that uh, on the Slark, he was really active. He didn't just sit in lane and farm. I see a lot of uh, safe lane Slarks doing that, which is usually why I don't like to see that. But uh, he was very active that game, and that helped out a lot. I think with the snowballing. Yeah, we we saw the we saw kind of saw their picks and what. They were going to try to do so we realized that you know we got to take advantage of uh, making sure that ld is behind and while ld is behind we try to get a huge lead ahead of them so we can't just sit back and farm while ld gets you know six slider right now no that definitely makes sense um what happened with the mid it seemed like you're having a difficult time playing against that uh wind ranger ken 
Rip. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> he was complaining okay, a lot. So, in the lane. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't look so fun. He was uh, getting hit by a lot of the power shots, and it, he was he was losing the lane. To be fair, but uh, let's look at game one. Um, there was a moment where there was a huge wombo combo, and uh, all five of your heroes died, and you guys were ahead at that point, and I'm sure you guys felt ahead. Uh, how, how did you feel after that fight? Did you still two. want to? Yep. There was a five man ravage into the uh, uh, into a four man call down, and oh. I think it went five for easier. three or something like that. Uh, yeah, I think I remember that fight. Um, we had a sort of miscommunication with when to engage, and we waited too long, so they got the jump on us for that. We were trying to decide if we were going to try to wrap around and get them, but ultimately they took advantage of our hesitation and we were able to pull off a successful gank on us. But we, no, I think, we're not talking about that fight. Hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna have to look at the replay, dude. No, it's, it's a long, it's day. a long game. Like it's, it's hard. I actually was. I think telling, we just uh, overcommitted too early, and then the fight didn't go our way. We were just trying to get a pick off. It looked like you were trying to pick off the line, and then yeah, and then we we're supposed to back off and reengage, but but that uh, that blink ravage. I was just curious because it looked like you guys immediately went back on the aggressive. You weren't scared at all. You didn't. Uh... So I was hoping to hear some. Some excitement, some... Give me give me a story. Oh, there's no story. <laughs> <laughs> Most of our misplays has come from hesitation or miscommunication. Well, that definitely makes sense. Uh, you know, you are playing as a five stack, so you want that to be as fluid as possible. But it definitely happens. I know sometimes, too, when I'm playing, uh, especially, like, a Vegetable Spirit or something, I'm, like, yelling at my team, like, okay, okay, I'm gonna swap, I'm gonna swap. And then, because it's taking so long for them to pay attention, that I, I miss my swap completely. And then I think half the time I get is good if you really know your teammates. It's kind of hard to get a successful swap off if you don't Like when you play in pubs yeah. and you get yeah. the swap, and then you're just... I don't think I would ever play Ben in your position hand. 5 in a pub. Oh, I do all the time. I also play Io, though, so apparently I really hate myself. Yeah. Yeah. Can't trust pubs. <laughs> hey, man, when it goes well, it goes fantastic. But when it goes wrong, it, and it gets often goes bad. wrong. Well, we're going to stay positive here, though, right, Karayamon? Positive. Right? right? All right. Do you have another question? Any other questions for them? Uh, the Ember Spirit ban in both games, were you guys fearing, was there a particular person on the other side that picks Ember Spirit, or is it just a hero you guys don't like? Uh, I think it's a hero we don't like. We usually ban him in almost every game. The, I think part of it is also, right now we play a lot of around 30 minute end game teams, so... Ember Spirit's the kind of hero that can stall a game pretty well. You sound like uh, hot singles in your area. They say if the game goes past like 30 minutes, generally they throw. <laughs> That'll be an interesting matchup if you guys ever do uh, meet up. Is that the next one? I don't I think Is it the next one? They're, like... they're freaking crazy to watch. They're like insane. They're so much fun to, uh, to cast. Because you never... I like... Um, when I'm casting their games half the time, the chat will be, like, trying to guess what's going on. They'll be like, oh, that's definitely, you know, a safe lane, this and that. And I'm like, no, it's it's hot singles in your area. It could really just be anything. But uh, when you mentioned, you know, the fact that you've got teams that want to end before the 30-minute mark, that made me think of, uh, of them because they're very similar there. It seems like either you win within the first 30 minutes or the games go ridiculously long in this meta. Yeah, we had a... We had a couple games that went like I don't know seventy minutes or so, and it's, the thing is, it's just like not fun to play at that point as well. Yeah, with team with well. team fight lineups being so uh, so popular, it's really hard to push high ground after a certain point. Like once heroes have their items, so I think that might be a part of it. 
I'm like trying to check the brackets here. How does Discord know I'm playing Dota 2? The wizards. Just witchcraft. Okay. Yeah, you actually go up against them next next game. Oh my gosh. Good luck. I am so excited to uh, cast that game, so definitely like let me know when that's happening. Sure. All right, guys. Well, I don't want to keep you anymore because I know it's a it's a Sunday night and people have work, school, what have you. Uh, but thank you so very much for uh, letting us interview you here. Congratulations again on the win. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, good luck in your next match. It's going to be a good one. Cheers, guys. See ya. All right, guys. Well, thank you again so much for tuning in. That was an interview with uh, two of the players from Team Snackers. That was Diaspora. Diaspora? I always say the wrong. Oh, my God. Um, Diaspora. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, Die High. But, uh, yeah, so that's going to be it for tonight in terms of Nota games. If you're interested in seeing more of these games, you can always follow me on Twitter. Uh, the handle is GG Miss Moxie. I usually post as early as possible when I find out that they're having games. Thank you again to Koryamon for being my co-caster tonight. It was a lot of fun. It was a, it was a blast. And uh, have a great night, guys. <laughs>